In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. What a beautiful day to stay inside. And we are gathered around this altar to celebrate the Eucharist. And so we take a moment to thank God for all the blessings that He's given to us, as we also ask for His mercy, His forgiveness, and His love. Lord Jesus, you came into the world in obedience to the Father's will. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you suffered and died for our sins. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, on the third day you rose from the dead. And now plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks. For your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace on earth, peace to people of good will. Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand, the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest and on earth. Peace on earth, peace to people of good will. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, glory to God, glory to God, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace on earth, peace to people of good will. Amen, amen. Let us pray. O God, by whom we are redeemed and receive adoption, look graciously upon your beloved sons and daughters, that those who believe in Christ may receive true freedom and an everlasting inheritance. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Ruthodom. Who can know God's counsel 
or who can conceive what the Lord intends. For the deliberations of mortals are timid and unsure of our plans. For the, in, for the corruptible body burdens the soul and the earthen shelter weighs down the mind that has many concerns. And scarce should we guess the things on earth and what is within our grasp we find with difficulty. But when things are in heaven, who can search them out? Or who ever knew your counsel except you had given your wisdom and sent your Holy Spirit from on high? And thus were the paths of those on earth made straight. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to Philemon. I, Paul, an old man, and now also a prisoner for Christ Jesus, urge you on behalf of my child Onesimus, whose father I have become in my imprisonment. I am sending him, that is my own heart, back to you. I should have liked to retain him for myself so that he might serve me on your behalf in my imprisonment for the gospel but I did not want to do anything without your consent, so that the good you do might not be forced but voluntary. Perhaps this is why he was away from you for a while, that you might have him back forever, no longer as a slave, but more than a slave, a brother, beloved especially to me, but even more so to you, as a man and in the Lord. 
So if you regard me as a partner, welcome him as you would me. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Great crowds were traveling with Jesus, and he turned and addressed them. If anyone comes to me without hating his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, and even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not carry his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Which of you wishing to construct a tower does not first sit down and calculate the cost to see if there is enough for its completion? Otherwise, after laying the foundation and finding himself unable to finish the work, the onlookers should laugh at him and say, this one began to build but did not have the resources to finish? Or what king marching into battle would not first sit down and decide whether with 10,000 troops he can successfully oppose another king advancing upon him with 20,000 troops? But if not, while he is still far away, he will send a delegation to ask for peace terms. In the same way, any one of you who does not renounce all his possessions cannot be my disciple. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Two doctors and an HMO manager died and lined up at the pearly gates for admission into heaven. St. Peter asked them to identify themselves. One doctor stepped forward and said, I was a pediatric spine surgeon, and I helped kids overcome their deformities. And St. Peter said, you can enter into heaven. The second doctor said, I was a psychiatrist. I helped people to rehabilitate themselves. St. Peter invited him into heaven. The third applicant stepped forward and said, I was an HMO manager. I helped people get cost-effective health care. And St. Peter said, you can come in too. But the HMO manager walked by Peter and he heard him say, you can stay three days and then you can go to hell. <laughs> You know, Jesus places some pretty extreme demands on us in this gospel today. I mean, does he really expect us to hate our father and our mother, our children, our brothers and our sisters? Does he expect us to renounce all of our possessions? How can we live without healthy human relationships? How can we survive without a house for shelter, or a car for travel, or some money in the bank to deal with those unexpected crises that come up? Why is Jesus so insistent that we renounce our relationships and our possessions? Well, perhaps a story might help. 
A man was traveling through the desert and he ran out of water. He realized that in short order, unless he found some water, he was going to die. In the middle of nowhere, he came across a shed. When he entered in, he found a jug of water, a pump, and a note. The note said, take the jug of water, pour it into the shaft of the pump, prime it, then move the lever, and you will have all the water that you ever need. Well, the man faced a decision, didn't he? Should he do what the note said, pouring the water into the pump in hopes of an abundance of water? Or should he drink the water in the jug because he was dying of thirst? After all, he was certain of the water in the jug, but there was no guarantee that this pump was going to work. He thought for a long while, and then he took the jug of water and he poured it into the pump. He moved the lever, nothing. He moved the lever again, and there was a little gurgle. Then he moved the lever a third time, and water began to flow. He drank all that he needed, filled his water bottles, refilled the jug for the next traveler who might pass by. Now all of this happened because the man found the freedom to give up the water that was in the jug. The story is about finding the freedom to let go. And so are Jesus' words in today's gospel. For Jesus understands that unless we find the freedom to let go of some of the good things in our lives, we will never be living the lives that are best for us. Children are good, but every parent knows when they send a son or a daughter or both off to college, they must find the freedom of letting go of their proximity of that relationship so that their children might grow. Popularity is good, but there are times that we have to let go of what our friends think in order to do what is right. Marriage is good, but when divorce becomes inevitable, we must find the freedom of letting go of that relationship so that our life can continue. Health, that's good, but when we contract a disease without a cure, or we experience the disability of growing older, We must find the freedom to let go of our health as we once had it and choose a new way in which to live. It's hard to let go of the good things in our lives, but there are times where it is essential to do so. In those times, if we try to hold on to our children or our marriage or our popularity or our health, it will not bless us but will harm us. That is why we must find the freedom to let go. Now our faith can help us here. Jesus tells us that when we find the freedom to let go of those things of which we must put behind us, God will not forget us. God will act and lead us to a new and perhaps deeper good. That promise of Jesus is something that we must hold on to because at times letting go of the good things in our lives seems like taking that last bit of water we have and pouring it down a dry pump. But Jesus tells us that if we let go of the good things, we can become his disciples. That is good news indeed. When we are in the presence of Christ, there is not only water, but wine. Not only survival, but the fullness of life. Whoever does not carry their own cross and come after me cannot be 
my disciple. Amen. And now let us stand and together profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting in his love for us, we bring our prayers now to our Heavenly Father. That those who have dedicated their lives to serving Christ in the church may be blessed with strength and perseverance to remain faithful to their promises. Let us pray to the Lord. That world leaders may be led by the Spirit in attending to the needs of the weakest and most vulnerable, especially the unborn. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord that those suffering from illness or disease may be comforted by the presence of Christ walking with them. Let us pray to the Lord. That those of us gathered here this morning may be blessed with the grace to let go of the things of this world in order to pursue the things of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord that all who have died, especially John Armiger, for whom this Mass is celebrated, may they live in the light and peace of God's presence in heaven forever. Let us pray to the Lord. And for the Kelly family, on the loss of Deacon Jim Kelly, who passed away this week, that God will watch over them and comfort them in their grief. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord and for all those who are celebrating birthdays or anniversaries this week, let us pray to the Lord. Lord and for all those who will be traveling, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for those who have asked for our prayers, those we promise to pray for this morning, and those who have no one to pray for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And now we pause to add our own intentions in silence. And for all these prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, knowing that we never walk alone, we ask you to hear and answer our prayers according to your holy will, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. 
It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. And by the mystery of this water and wine, we come to share in the humanity of Christ, we himself to share in our humanity. And blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. And the Lord, wash away my neck. Cleanse me of all my sins. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that this our sacrifice may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. O God, who give us the gift of true prayer and of peace, graciously grant that through this offering we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty, and by partaking of the sacred mystery, we may be faithfully united in mind and heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, Christ humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Blessed is he who comes, who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many 
for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. And drink this cup. We proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Mark, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all. We pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Saint Michael, our patron, and all the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages, who we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. 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 And now let us pray together in the words that Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, Jesus, are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. With Let us offer one another a sign of Christ's peace. Peace.
the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Our second collection this morning is for capital improvements. Yes. body of Christ. And may Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. And may Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. And may Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. And may Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Amen. And may God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The body of Christ. 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 
The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Let us pray. Grant that your faithful, O Lord, whom you nourish and endow with life through the food of your word and heavenly sacrament, may so benefit from your beloved Son's great gifts that we may merit an eternal share in his life who lives and reigns forever and ever. The September ministry schedules are out there on the display case, as well as a separate sheet for altar servers. We still need altar servers, but we're going to try again in September to start utilizing servers. So if you're interested in doing that, you just have to have celebrated your first Holy Communion. Uh, also, a registration form for the Parish School of Religion is on that table. Please take that. It's the you know, general information, plus things like allergies that we need to be aware of for your children. So take a sheet. Each child should be on a separate sheet. And no one has signed up for 6th, 7th, or 8th grade. I can't believe that we don't have some children in that age group. But anyway, parents, uh, 6, 7, and 8, if you have a child, the sign-up sheets are out there. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord and one another. Amen. Thanks be to God. And have a safe Labor Day.